City strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light it pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So this is going to be our second Fall Vibes project for October 2024. And this is the month, I'm very busy this month, so this is the month of quick and easy projects. You know, I've done some very intricate time-consuming ones lately, and there's just lots of stuff going on in my life right now. So, um, we are going to make a really cute, hopefully, hopefully, skirt. And it's going to be this one here. It should be fairly easy. It does have a ruffle. And I don't know if you can see it there. Let me flip over the back. It's at a diagonal. So instead of just a line going straight across, I don't know why my light is doing that. Just ignore it. But instead of a line just going straight across, it's kind of going up an angle. I think that's cool because I'm going to be using my butterfly print. This is a very pretty fall colored butterfly print that I've been hanging on to. The pattern says it requires two and five eighths yards. I have just about that, so it's kind of like it's meant to be. So um, the sizes are just like small, medium, large, and you know, as life is, my size falls into the large range, the lower end of the large range, but that's life. So I'm gonna be cutting that size out, and uh, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, I wanted to let you know I did pre-wash and pre-dry my fabric. As you can see, it has surging at the edge. Um, I do that before I wash it. And I wash it on hot because this is 100% cotton. On as hot as I can and I dry it as long and as hot as I can. Just because I want to get all the possible um, shrinkage and everything out of my fabric before I cut into it. So I would highly recommend if you're using cotton that you do the same. Okay, let me get my pattern cut out. Okay, so I just opened it up and if you can see, it does have this other beautiful version with ruffles coming down, which I love, but it requires twice as much fabric than I currently have. So unfortunately that is off the table now. Who knows if I'll make it later? Maybe, maybe not. But these four or three pieces, piece one, two, and three, are all we're gonna need for this one, which is going to be very helpful. This will be the second project in a row that I do that only need three pieces. So I think it's a trend for October. All right, so I've got my pattern pieces in general cut out. They're very large, which is good. There's going to be a lot of fullness worked in. I want to figure out how long these patterns are making this skirt to be. So I'm doing skirt A and I will come down here. Finished garment length, that's it, down here. And for both A and B, it is 39 inches. So what I'm gonna do is put my little clip at 39 inches, and that is the measurement from the waist. Okay, so I'll put this at my waist measurement and see how far down that's gonna fall. Okay, and because I am shorter than their standard size, I need to shorten my pattern. I need to shorten my skirt about four inches to get it just so it hits that same length. And this is a long skirt. It's going to be just above ankle length for me. But, you know, that's nice and dramatic for a dramatic print like this. And I'm going to shorten the two inches in my upper pieces here. And um, I wanted to point out on the front piece, there is no lengthen and shorten here line. However, there is on the back piece. 
So first I'll show you this one and then we'll go to the other, okay? So if I want to shorten it um, by four inches and I'm doing it here, what I need to do is fold it along this lengthen and shorten here line up here, okay? I'm just pointing, making a little pleat. And then I need to come up, actually, let me do this so that I have my little grid behind me. I need to make a two inch deep pleat, okay? So let me just hold that in place with a pin here real quick. Come over on this side. Trying to get all of this on the camera without running into all of my stuff is tricky some days, okay? So folding this so that I have a two inch deep pleat over here and then kind of straightening it out across the center. All right. And I want to keep this grain line going straight. So let me get my ruler just to make sure this is still two inches here. Yes, it is. And is it still two inches over here? Yes, it is. So we're good. So I'm just going to smooth that across. This line um, on this side here is for if you're doing view A, it's a placement line for this ruffle. We're just completely ignoring that for right now. Okay. So with this, fold it up like that. I'm just going to put a couple little pieces of tape on here. Over here where it's not quite even, I'm just going to trim that so that it will be. Okay. And over here, just going to smooth that out. And there we go. So like over here where it's kind of pooching out, I'm just going to start down here at the bottom where it sh is and kind of blend it. I'm not sure if you can see that like that. Okay. So I'm just cutting that off. That's going to be just fine. So now the back piece here is four inches shorter. I need to do the front the same thing, even though there is not a lengthen and shorten hairline on this. I can figure that out. You know, we're intelligent people. So I'm laying this so that my grain line is matching up with the grid underneath. And you know what? I'm going to put a couple weights on here just to keep it from wanting to go away. And now I'm just going to pick some place in here to start my fold, probably if I trace this all the way across, it's right here. And I want to fold that up right there. Okay. All right. So now that that is folded, I'm going to put my two inch ruler on top of it just to make my life easier and pull this down. Okay. And that way I know I have a two inch pleat in the middle. There you go. So, you know, fold it either way. Those are the two methods I use, but they both will work. So now, before I tape this, I want to get my back piece and place it on top to make sure that it's going to be the right length over here. And if you can see, it looks like my bottom one is actually about a quarter inch too long. I can make that up. That's not a big deal to me. And over here on this side, yeah, if I get everything folded out right, yeah, this one's pretty much perfect down here. Okay. So I'm going to consider that good. If you wanted to, you could actually tweak this at this point and move it up, you know, a fraction of an eighth of an inch just to get that bottom exactly right, which is fine. So those are going to be my two new pieces. My length should be perfect now for what I want this pattern to be. And I'm going to go ahead and cut them out. What I'm going to need to do is cut out one of these front pieces, one of these back pieces, and then down here, the lower ruffle, I need to cut two of them because I'm doing view A. These pieces are wide. So you're going to need to only cut a single layer of fabric 
at a time. And I'm looking at this and I don't think there's a particular direction because I've got butterflies flying this way and I've got butterflies flying this way. So I don't think it's going to make a difference. I'm just going to put them on here the way that it fits, just making sure that my grain line is going with the straight of grain. Actually, I need to point something out to you. Um, this lower ruffle piece is too wide to fit across a 44 inch wide fabric. It's just too, too wide. So I am turning it and I am actually gonna be using the length as the width of my fabric. So like over here, you can see my selvage is down here. I'm just gonna be putting my pieces this way I think as far as the butterfly print, that's not gonna make a difference because like I said, I have butterflies flying all kinds of directions. I just wanted to point out, when you're cutting a single layer of an asymmetrical thing, um, I wanna make sure that I have two opposites that are gonna match. So I actually cut this out with my pattern piece upside down on top of a fabric right side up. So. Um, that's wrong. So, yeah, that's really too bad because I should have been paying attention. I need to put them so that it is right side up on a print that is right side up. And thankfully, I do think that I'm going to be able to have enough fabric to make it work and everything, but I just wanted to point that out. Make sure your pattern is right side up and your fabric is right side up for these two pieces. Actually, since I cut out two opposite pieces for my lower part, and if this is right side up and I have a short end here, I need a long end of my ruffle down here so I can make that work. The only difference is that on my skirt, instead of having it swoop up that way, it's gonna swoop up that way. Is anybody gonna care? Absolutely not. So in order to make it work so that I don't have to waste this piece, what I need to do is make sure that this piece is print side down, okay? And that's gonna be much better, I think. So let me go ahead and get this cut out we will make it work. No one shall be the wiser. And as far as the machines today, for the main sewing machine, we're going to be using my sweet little Juliet. She hasn't been out to play for a while, so she's a little 99 from the 1920s. Love her. And of course, the old standby. Ooh, that flickering light will induce a seizure there. Okay, the regular 1980s vintage, you know, serger. It does what it needs to do, but She's the cutie pie for the day. All right, so back over here. The first thing we're gonna be doing is sewing the front and back together at the side seams. Very easy. But before I sew them together, I am going to serge all the way around this piece just so it won't unravel or anything as it's being washed. And please remember, because I cut my fabric out backwards, Instead of looking like this, it's gonna look like that, but you'll get the idea. It's gonna be the same basic instructions, okay? And actually, actually, I'm looking at it, and I'm wondering why couldn't I just wear it backwards? If I wore it backwards, it would be the exact same thing. And the front and the back are pretty much the same pattern piece. So that's what I may be doing, we'll see. But for right now, I'm gonna get my front and back pieces and just serge around the edges. And when I do that, I just skim it um, with the blade. I try not to cut off any fabric, just lightly going over the edges so that everything will be nice and neat. I want to show you the front and back pieces are the same size. So I'm just gonna flip these, call my back, my front, my front, my back, and then it'll match exactly uh, what this is going to be. So there you go. Okay, so now that I've got it all surged, you can see I leave it so that I have corners that are true. Um, I'm going to match up and pin these sides and stitch them at 5 eighths of an inch and then press the seam allowances open on both sides. Okay, so I've got that done. My seam allowance is pressed open and then I 
came over and I was holding it up, I was saying, hmm, that's not as wide as I was thinking it was going to be. So I slipped it on, and yes, I can pull it up over my big old chunky hips with a little bit of ease. Um, but just to let you know, this is not made to have a huge amount of ease. A lot of times when you see a pattern like this, you're figuring it's like really flared at the top. It is not. And here below this bullseye and piece number one is the hip measurements. So it does say for my size, which is large, um, it says for a 46 inch hip. So, you know, we can make that work and everything, but if you're expecting it to be really wide up at the top, uh, this is not gonna get it. If you can make a modification to make it wider, however, and if I ever do this again, I will. And what I will do is cut this center up to the waistline, okay? And then again, I would cut it over here about halfway, you know, between these two, again, up to that waistline, and over here. So I'm just showing you what I will do next time if I use this pattern, and by cutting it now, it'll trigger a memory in me that I need to do this. So with it this way, and I would do the same thing to the other side, or just use this piece twice, honestly, because they're the same size, um, then you can just spread these out however much you need for extra width at the waist area or at the hip area. And so this would be adding about one, two, three, four, about another five, five to six inches in the hip if you have it spread out like that. And so that would probably work, okay? But just thought I would let you know, oops, there I am. Um, that's the situation with this dress, but yes, we can make it work. But um, I'm going to go ahead and fold this up so it does not get torn up because it'd be very easy to do at this point with it all cut up like that. So now what I need to do is get my lower ruffle pieces and the same thing, I'm going to serge around both of them separately and then sew them together on the sides. Okay, so there they are, pressed open. And I need to get some gathering stitches in here. So if you look at your fabric, if you have forgotten to cut the notch or mark the notch, which is in the middle of the swoopy side at the top, okay, and you get to this part and you forgot what is the bottom and what is the top. The side that um, is on the straight of grain, so if you can look at your threads and they're straight, okay, that is the bottom. The side where, as you look at the threads, you can see that, well, I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of cut at an angle. That is the top part. And I need to run gathering threads at the top. And because this is quite a long stretch, I am going to switch out my bobbin to a heavy duty thread to put into the uh, bobbin, regular thread on the top. And that way I can just make one big pass. I just like that better. If you would prefer to do a um, set of gathering threads starting at one side and then stopping at this side and then doing it again over there, that is fine. That's actually what the instructions tell you to do. I am just obstinate and the fewer threads I have to pull, the better for me. So uh, let me get that switched out and I'll show you how I'm doing that on my very, very old machine. Okay, so first of all, this is the thread I'm using. It's very, very heavy. Um, it's not thick, but it's very, very strong. It's actually a fishing line of some kind. Um, doesn't have a label, but that spool I got at a yard sale at one point, and it'll last me my entire lifetime, I'm sure. And so I put the bobbin with this in it down here in the bobbin case, and the thread is just normal thread. On these old machines, if you've ever seen the little turny knob, they do not have reverse. But if you screw this knob, this is your stitch length, so if you screw it in all the way, that is the longest stitch, okay? And we can work with that reverse. That is just fine. So um, I would suggest if you're going to be using a different kind of bobbin thread, a different weight, uh, try it out on a scrap first just to see what it's going to look like. Sometimes I like to actually loosen the tension just a bit up here because I want all of 
the tension to be on that bottom thread that I'm pulling and that's going to make it a lot easier as I'm pulling my gathers. Okay, so this is my skirt. It's actually upside down. The waistband's here. This is the hem that the, or not the hem, but the part of the skirt that my lower ruffle is going to get sewn onto. About halfway there is a notch. I just have pins marking where that is. Okay, so this is the shorter part of my skirt here. I need to make sure that the longer part of my ruffle goes on to that. So skirt's right side out, ruffle is wrong side out. And if I, let me put these two together so it's a little more obvious. If I put these two together, you can see this is much longer than this. So my gathering stitches are up here at the top, about an eighth of an inch apart, okay? Up there, both of them. And I am going to need to match this. I'm going to open this whole thing up, match up this side seam with this side seam. Okay, so just to get it started, I'm opening it and I'm going to pin on both sides of this seam allowance so that they will stay nice and open and well behaved. Okay. Now, opening up this whole ruffle and kind of tucking the top of the skirt into it is going to make more sense for me. So give me a second to get all of this settled. I'm going to go ahead and take this opposite side seam, seam allowance, and match it up to the one for my ruffle over here. Um, I was trying to see which side is my bobbin and my bobbin is actually on the right side of my fabric so I need to remember that. I'll have to pull those through. I'll show you in a minute. Okay so pinning these. Now at that halfway point where the notches are I'm going to go ahead and pin that also. So here to here. Put one of those pins away and the same thing over here. Okay, so now I have it into quarters. Now I just did one big set of gathering stitches all the way around. So I'm actually going to divide this into eighths. So I'm gonna take each quarter, pull it apart so that where it's pinned, it kind of matches up. Find the midpoints here and pin that together, okay? I think that that's going to give me a more manageable size. And if you can see, it's not going to be a terribly large amount that we're gathering in here. You know, it's, it's just going to be a little bit, but that's okay. That's all right. So let me get all of this um, midpoints marked and pinned, and then we'll just start pulling. Okay, now I'm going to, basically I have threads here and here. And I'm going to pull on this side until I get to this halfway point and then start over and pull these on this side to the halfway point. Okay. But because my bobbin thread, which is the strong one I want to pull is on the inside. Um, I'm going to pull that towards the outside. So I already did it for the upper one. What I do is I just pull up this thread until I can see the little loop of the bottom one peeking up. Grab a pin and flick it out. So now I have both of my super strong bobbin threads here. Um, let me just make sure, give a little tug and make sure I'm pulling the right one. And I'm not. Let me grab this one. There we go. Okay. So let me go ahead, just pull these two at a time. And what I like to do when I'm doing a long amount of gathers is usually the first couple tugs are the hardest getting everything adjusted. I will pull some and then I'm going to tie a knot in them. Okay. So that they can't get out of whack. And then I can move all of these gathers down all the way and then do the next little tug. Okay, so I have that first little eighth gathered and see that's the amount of gather in there. It's not that much. So I think that it's going to be enough to make it look full, but not so much that it's going to be, you know, too much, 
you know. So let me go ahead and get finished getting it all gathered together. Once I have it all pinned together, I'm going to come around and stitch it together at 5 eighths of an inch right there all the way around. Alrighty, so I got that sewn on and I can suggest, you know, you do you if you don't want to, but I would highly recommend when you're sewing this, put the side with the gathering threads on top and the side that does not have gathering threads on the bottom, just because it's a lot easier to adjust them and make sure everything is straight when you can look at them, okay? So I've got that sewn all the way around at 5 8 7 inch. The instructions want you to come back and do a second row of stitching about halfway up that seam allowance. Um, and then trim next to that second row of stitching. I am going to make my second row of stitching, but I am not going to trim it. I'm just going to leave it the full length, but I think having a second row of stitching right about here can only help to keep this, you know, strong and flat. So let me go put that in and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that that is done, I am pressing my seam allowances up towards the top. Okay, if I press the top part of my gathers, that does not bother me at all. Um, and then once I finish this, I'm going to go ahead and press up my hem. What they want you to do is do a, a narrow hem at the bottom. So folding it up about 5 eighths of an inch, giving that a press, and then coming back and folding it in like so, and giving it another quick press. Okay, and then I'll be able to come back with the machine and just edge, edge stitch along that fold and that's going to be my nice little hem. Alrighty, so I want to show you there is my hem, you know, stitched on and I think that that's going to be great. And this is going very fast. We're going to get this done in no time. I love gathered elastic skirts sometimes for that. So when you're putting elastic in something with a seam allowances, that can be an issue, you know. So what the instructions are going to tell you to do is stitch down about three inches on each side of each seam allowance to keep them laying nice and flat so that they're not going to do that and get in your way. But instead of that, what I'm going to do is use a piece of stitch witchery. So I'm just going to rip off a piece three or four inches or so tuck it underneath that seam allowance and then press it. Okay. And then that's going to temporarily glue that down or maybe permanently glue that down so that when I'm trying to feed my elastic through, it's not going to get caught. So let me do this one and both on the other side. Okay. So now that that is done, what I need to do is fold down the uh, edge. They say a quarter inch. So to me, that is just beyond where my serging line is because my serging is approximately an eighth of an inch, you know? So let me do that all the way around this top edge. Okay, so I've got that folded down. So this is my elastic. It is a one inch elastic. And I want to make sure that my casing is going to be big enough. So when I fold it down, if I'm going to be edge stitching this down, figure that's going to take at least an eighth of an inch to be safe. And I want at least another eighth of an inch just for ease of movement. If this is too tight on the elastic, it becomes very bound in and then that's a pain. Okay. So if my elastic is one inch, I want at least a quarter inch more. I might even go three eighths of an inch more. Okay. So that would put this it this way. That would be putting this at one and three eighths from the top fold. Okay. And I think that that's going to work for me. Okay. So I've got that pin just to start with. I'm going to pin it at the same level all the way around. I'm actually going to leave my opening like right over here, not over all of the seam allowance here, but right next to it. Probably leave it open about three inches. That's going to give me plenty of room to be able to work my little bodkin and elastic to be able to feed everything through. But before I do that, 
Let me get this folded. I am going to press it so I have a nice crease on the top and then come back and edge stitch right along this folded edge down here. All right, so I've got that sewn together. Here's my little opening. Now the instructions tell you to cut a piece of elastic that is the size of your waist plus one inch. So that is approximately what I have here. And I have my little bodkin attached to the end and I'm just going to feed it through. It's not a huge amount to push through the waistband, so I'm not really worried about this side disappearing on me. If I was, I would pin the tail down here just so it wouldn't pop in, but I think we're going to be okay. But at this point, I have plenty of room in my casing. You know, if anything, I gave myself a little bit too much, but I would rather have too much than too little up there. You know? Okay, so I've got them both through. Pull my bodkin off. And these are pretty thick pieces of elastic. I could overlap them. But instead, I'm going to use the scrap o cloth method. So what I need to do is right about there, I am going to sew both of these pieces of elastic to this scrap of cloth, just kind of going back and forth. Um, so that they are both secured to the piece of cloth and they are kind of butted up together just like that. Okay, so there it is. I kind of just kept going back and forth on there. And what I'm going to do now is just fold these in, do a stitch down the middle. It'll hold it all together. It'll stay nice and flat and very secure. Okay, so, you know, stretching it out and shaking it around to get that elastic settled where it needs to be. Now I can come back. Where's my opening? Here it is. And edge stitch this opening closed. And then I'm also going to come in here, well from the outside, and do kind of like a stitch in the ditch kind of thing where my two side seams are just to hold that elastic so it's not going to want to twist up on those sides. Okay, so here it is, and I have my shirt on top of it through belt on just because elastic waist skirts in general aren't really the best fitting up here on top. You know, they tend to look a little bit poochy, and I could probably have cut my elastic a little bit shorter, but at this point, it is what it is. I think that if I do this skirt again, what I would do is I think I would feel more comfortable with that whole top section being even shorter. I can't imagine what it would have been because I already shortened it by, what was it, four inches. So that would have put this ruffle way down here. And uh, I don't know, having that asymmetrical there and having it feel on my thigh right here and this down there, I think it looks okay. I think I just need to get used to walking in it, you know? But it's a very fun print, I think, and I think that um, having that asymmetricalness, it makes it a little more interesting than the ordinary flat ruffle. But this is a very quick and easy make, and it's something that a beginner could make. It's something that someone who's very advanced, who just wants to crank something out really fast, can make, you know? It's not a whole lot of fitting. I would just say make sure you understand what your hip measurement is. Give yourself at least three inches of ease from your hip measurement to the size of the finished measurement of the garment at your hip, just to make sure you have plenty of room to move around. Okay, but I like it. I think it's fun for fall. And uh, there you go. So I hope you're enjoying your fall sewing and I will see you next time. Bye bye. New colored life, free of the city strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sew and spin, and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. 
Red barn green pastures, beautiful white houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light pleases me, as it is plain to see. I'm living my bucolic life.